Hey guys, uh, today I, I thought I'd try something different. It's a little bit different. Um, uh, some of you, or a lot of you, would probably know um, that I am a self-professed cyclist. Uh, I did that for years, um, pretty passionate about it, uh, until I started getting injured uh, while riding the bicycle. Um, so I got into motorcycling. Uh, you can see in the background there, I got the bike that I built a long time ago, probably getting close to 10 years now. This was supposed to be the touring rig that was going to take me across Canada. Uh, those were the hopes and dreams back then. When you start getting injured and it's always painful to ride, then you kind of slow down a bit. So that's the bicycle. And down on the floor. Ah! What is that? That there is an e-bike motor. It's a mid-drive um, electric bicycle motor and all of its components here. I've actually been wanting to build an electric bike for such a long time, but there was also a point in time back when I was cycling where I had too much pride to think, uh, why would I ever use it? Uh, a motorized powered bicycle um, you know you're uh, you're a cyclist so your pride is a little a little higher and kind of a, you think that uh, it's 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 beneath you but now here I am you know as you get older and you have more aches and pains and you know you just want to enjoy riding a bicycle instead of uh, working really hard and getting injured so this is where we're at. This is a Bafang. Oh gosh, it is heavy. Doing this with one hand is, is tough. This is a Bafang mid drive motor and 1000 watt, 48 volt, 1000 watt. I actually bought this used off a good friend of mine. Um, his name's Doug H. Nutt. You've probably heard of him if you're into e-bikes. And I've actually uh, been wanting to do this a, a long time ago. Just uh, for one thing, it's, it's, it's not cheap. Uh, they're not cheap, but Doug gave me a, an awesome deal on this. Unbelievable deal. So, yeah, um, this kit is actually uh, featured in a video that he put up on his channel so go check him out it's Doug H Nutt he's uh, he's pretty much into all electronics and uh, and and all that fun stuff so yeah I'm taking over this um, he's moved on this will not be a, a how to install uh, this mid drive motor there's a ton of them um, uh, on YouTube so I don't need to repeat repeat all that be repetitive it's not going to be a step-by-step, -step. it's going to be my own personal installation. I know that there's some issues with mounting these, so I'm going to be doing some stuff um, that's, uh, that's going to make it uh, more reliable, and hopefully anyways. Um, and whatever I run across, uh, issues, problems, um, then I'll, I'll put that on the video. Uh, enough talking, so let's, uh, let's go. Uh, most of the installs that I've seen out there uh, on different frames, mostly um, full suspension mountain bike frames, 
uh, with uh, thick down tubes, very uh, flat and wide, and um, um, swing arms. That uh, this motor here, the body of the motor actually hangs down that far down, like that, or even further, which reduces the ground clearance, of course, obviously. Um, and nothing really you can do about that. But for this frame, um, a relatively thinner tubes, steel frame, um, qu quite a light steel frame, triple butted, and I can make it go all the way up as high as that. And yeah, ground clearance is uh, hardly affected because it's pretty much level to the, the big chain ring. So, that's great. Another plus for using this bike frame, or this bike. Awesome. One of the most common issues with these Bafang mid drives is that uh, due to the weight of the motor um, and the way it's actually mounted, that by design, um, this, uh, this motor actually, whenever you hit a a bump or go off jumps or so with downhill bikes this actually is, is heavy enough that it would actually rotate downwards uh, no matter how tight you make this um, it's it's just it, it will just keep loosening up and you are constantly having to to um, put it back in place and then tighten it again um, so uh, what I've done to I guess resolve that issue or at least help in preventing that issue is that as you can see here uh, I've got uh, a large uh, hose clamp that goes all the way all the way around around the motor and I have secured it with another hose clamp on the down tube itself. There's actually two hose clamps there. I've got another one over there and this one here. So that alone should be very strong and should, at least I'm hoping, will hold up the weight of the motor. But in addition, as you can already see, I've also added this this bracket um, along with this uh, this bracket mount here I use it as a spacer this aluminum I guess uh, piece of uh, metal here and I use one of the a turnbuckles that I that I have that I can actually tighten it up and it's hooked up to this uh, clamp here and I can tighten this up it's actually pretty tight now I can't do it by hand so that is another addition to help keep the motor up so that it's not again rotating downwards whenever you hit bumps or so and I can actually adjust this by tightening it up loosening it if I have to so I think that would be a great solution for that and I can't see this uh, this moving at all so uh, that's it for that.
model UI240 battery charger. I think it's about 14 pounds. Uh, I hope uh, I can make this secure on the bike. Keys, cool. 52 volts, 21. H so so there she is folks uh, the complete bike just take a walk around we've got a uh, 52 volt 21 AH battery here I decided to get the the biggest battery that I can get just for range mostly, not necessarily power, but uh, I'd like as much range as possible. I've explained most of all this stuff, and I've already taken it for uh, an inaugural ride. Uh, maybe I'll put up a, that video as well. But uh, it is holding on solid. Um, so. Oh, uh, you'll probably notice here, <laughs> I had so much wiring loom, extra, extra wires, and it just looked quite ugly, um, having it all just dangling, and even with the zip ties, um, it just didn't look, um, it looked like a, a rat's nest. So I've uh, put this uh, water bottle down here and uh, everything all the wires the extra wires are all in there uh, it just keeps it uh, all neat and tidy um, the wires just like that we got the throttle and the, the computer we got the tail light back here along with the, just the battery light seven speed cassette which is perfect uh, it's enough this kit also came with the uh, lecky um, bling ring clips clipless I just put my old battery uh, sorry bike computer on here I uh, may just take it off because it's probably not necessary anymore um, it just keeps track of uh, kilometers on the bike overall one last thing I guess I you'll notice here that the front derailleur I have left it on one of the things that uh, um, that I've noticed that everyone's having issues with is the the, the chain um, coming off of the, the front uh, chain ring um, with the stock uh, uh, chain ring of course the stock steel one uh, the this uh, aluminum chain ring here is supposed to is supposed to resolve that issue um, with the, the chain coming off because of the the poor chain line. Um, but it's just uh, another another um, measure. Um, I'm not sure why people don't do this. Um, just just keep it on. It, it's not rubbing anywhere. So I've just kept it on, just uh, as a secondary measure to so that, that the chain doesn't uh, derail. The chain line is actually really good. I can go from uh, small to big gear in the back uh, without actually having a, a, a poor chain line. Uh, as you can see, that is that is within what's uh, what's acceptable. Uh, and. I guess that's it. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. This is only a pedal assist level one. And <laughs> it goes. Keep up the pedaling. Even when my 
top gear now. There we go. Oh gosh, this is pretty thick. What the hell? I need a longer straight without speed bumps. I don't know if you saw that on uh, on the display. I was looking at the display. I wasn't even reaching top speed yet, but that hit 45. That hit 45 kilometers an hour. <laughs> That's 45. I wasn't expecting that at all. That was only on level assist one. Level assist one. That's with the throttle. I, I guess the uh, the programming with the throttle is uh, full speed all the time. I can change all that. I can change that to uh, yeah um, on the programming with the USB connector on the laptop but man I bet this thing does 60k no problem that is a lot of power that's a lot of power that is a uh... wow this is gonna be fun <laughs> 